Freak Zone. This is a podcast from the Freaky Zone on BBC Six Music, and this week I was joined by Cal Turney from Clinic and David Chatton Barker from Finders Keepers Records to talk about a brand new project, the Lost Tapes Record Club. Uh, welcome to the show, Carl Turney and uh, David Chatton Barker. Hello. Hi, hello, hi. Tell me then all about the Lost uh, Tapes Record Club, because I, I know very little about it, except that it's a beautiful-looking artefact that you've given me, a little sort of pink... Well, what is, what is that pink? What's, what colour is that? It's F- fuchsia, faded red. Yeah, yeah. Fuchsia, cerise, <laughs> shall we say? Lovely cerise little, nice. Lovely little package with a cassette inside it, Radio Law Series, the Lost Tapes Record Club. But, but tell me what this project is all about. It's um, basically a, a collection of found home recordings that exist in um, basically a found box of uh, cassettes, spool tapes that we've sourced back to Simmonsbury Village in Dorset and it was such an unusual collection of, of songs that we thought it deserved a kind of a compilation of some sort and mm. the, this, we were struggling for a, a kind of uh, shoe in about how we're going to put this, put this together and online saw uh, a box that David had done for his folklore tapes uh, imprint uh, that was celebrating the Pendle Witch Trials, mm-hmm. and it was such a beautiful uh, collect. You know, it was a, a beautifully screen printed box, and all this ephemera inside it was the missing piece of the jigsaw. Mm-hmm. And asked him if he'd help us to put this together. Yeah, which luckily he said yes. David, in these days of people, you know, you can grab music out of the earth for nothing. So, are you mm. working on the principle that it's important that you make things that are beautiful artifacts? Really, pretty much. Yeah. yeah. I mean, my background is uh, well, fine art is is, yeah. is what is why I studied. So, um, you know, groups like Fluxus who sort of presented um, interesting ideas mm. musically and uh, you know and um, also you know aesthetically as well yeah. in just really interesting ways. So, I suppose these boxes definitely hark back to that sort of time of of just presenting stuff in, in interesting ways, really, and, and it being more than just uh, a CD case, more than just a, a vinyl sleeve. Mm. There's, there's, there's various things in there. You know, it doesn't have to just be kind of paper. It could be, you know, there was a, there was a pressed nettle leaf, for example, in, in, the, pendle, in yeah. the pendle box, as well as uh, like hand-printed photographs. Uh, tell me a bit about this first track I'm going to play, Click Clap, Panhandle. Well, there's not really a lot known about it, to be honest. Okay. It's, it's kind of... Uh, all, all we can gather at this moment, endless discussions about how we're trying to interpret this music, and, and it's, it's, I think it's got a bit of a West Coast feel to it, with, uh, maybe rooted in uh, natural history. There's, there's, there's various suggestions of a kind of West Coast natural history connection, but it's, again, it's, there's little, little known, really. It's, it's, it, the beauty of it is, really, is it's kind of evoking the time before the internet was able to spoon-feed us information mm. and... I, you know, remember being given mixtapes with just band names and song titles, and you, you kind of you, you let your imagination run wild, and it fills in the gaps for you. And click clap uh, a track from the uh, Lost Tapes Record Club project that uh, Carl from Clinic and David from Finders Keepers are talking to me uh, about. And um, is it a series of four EPs? How, how is That's this right. going to come out? Yeah, yeah. it's going to be uh, four EPs uh, coming out monthly up to December. And me and Brian, who are collaborating on it as well, mm. we, we, with considering the, the possibility of setting up a label early early next year to maybe release it in more of a wider vinyl edition. Mm-hmm. It's interesting what you said about the internet, uh, that it has in some ways kind of taken a bit of the, the mystery uh, out of music, hasn't it? Is that, is that, do, would you think, do you agree with that? Absolutely, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's, it's, there's two sides to that, to that coin, I guess, because as, as well, you know, with things like Discogs now, it can lead you on, you know, fantastical journeys to find mm. out, you know, um, I had no idea that that guy played... You know, yeah. guitar on that album, and, and in that aspect, I do like it. Yeah. But yeah, I think it's stifling as well that sense of adventure of actually, you know, going to an archive somewhere to find more about it. Like, yeah, you know. I can remember as a kid, you'd read, I'd read about records and bands in like NME or whatever, 
but he, but it, it would often be a long time before I actually heard them because it wasn't that easy. You, you know, if you couldn't exactly. afford to just go and take a chance on record, you had to kind of hunt them down, didn't you? you yeah. Know? I mean, how has it changed things for you in a, in a band like Clinic? It's it's very strange because we can obviously reach a lot more people through the internet. That's a very good thing for for a band like us who are sort of on such a low level. It's it where years ago you'd maybe disappear into obscurity completely and get resurrected years later. But the the downside is you just this bombardment of information mm. and it almost becomes meaningless in a way. It just yeah. becomes like a stream of information. You know, you look, I don't know if you've done it, you go for your iPod, it's yeah. like you can't pick anything to listen to. No, no. Because you, you're completely uninspired. But when you had to wait three weeks to pick up the... Yeah, you know, let's put all surface records from yeah. Pro Records in Liverpool. Yeah. That's a real monumental occasion, you know. Absolutely, yeah. And and also when you, you know, had to wait for records or save up to get them, you gave them a lot longer, didn't you, than you mm. do now? I mean, I, I'm terrible at this now. If you know, if, if if I don't get it kind of straight away, whereas when I was a kid, if I'd just paid six quid for a record, you know, I'd listen to it ten times before I decided it was rubbish. Mm. By exactly, which yeah. time you played. It wasn't rubbish, you know what I mean? Exactly, yeah. yeah, that's yeah. It. It, 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 I miss those times. I know. It's that, it's that relationship with the object as well, I suppose. And and when you strip all that back and it is just the music amongst, you know, rubbing shoulders with infinite genres of yeah. of everything. Yeah. Then it, yeah. It, it, yeah, well, I mean, I don't... I can't do it. I don't have an iPod. It's too much for me. We'll have another piece of music now from this project. This is Peter Blocher and Stormy Point. Once upon a time, a shepherd called Calvi noticed that his sheep were feeding on the berries of an evergreen bush. A moment later, he stared open mouthed. The sheep began to dance, frolic, and deep about. Putting two and two together, he had some berries too. And in no time, those sheep had a very heavy shepherd. Peter Blocker and Stormy Point from the Lost Tapes Record Club project. Uh, Carl, that, that's very different in style from the first piece of music, so it's, it's kind of a diverse collection. It is, it, it, it's, it's a real kind of um, sort of patchwork quilt, really. Me, me and David were talking earlier about uh, how you could actually describe the, the particular songs on it, and I think the next song you're going to be playing is called Old Cup. Yeah, it is. Which instantly conjured up images of a, of a children's TV show mm. uh, from maybe like the 70s, imagining some kind of mechanical... Creature like uh, Pro- yeah. Professor Yaffle, I, I sort of yeah, imagine. Yeah, like, yeah, 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 absolutely. Uh, it just sort of conjures up so many images of, of that kind of era, but that's all. All we can do is guess. Really, it's just it's trying to sort of channel what what we're hearing. And yeah, to, so you just got so you just had the bare bones of information that you found about these things. But, yeah, yeah, and, and basically room certain rumors and yeah. Okay, well, let's uh, you know what one you just mentioned. Let's hear that old cup. The floor vibrates. Six music. Stuart McConey's Freakier Zone. Uh, Stratosphere, Jonas Krantz, and uh, The Floor Vibrates, Old Cup, both of which can be found on EP2 of uh, the Lost Tapes Record Club series of EPs, which Carl from Clinic and uh, Dave from Finders Keepers are talking about. Uh, EP2, a lovely little sort of oatmeal uh, colour, <laughs> I would describe that as. spot on. Um, and inside, these are really intriguing things because you've, you've chosen to package these things in a very particular way. There are, there are unusual little things in there which is kind of adds to the sense of mystery surrounding the whole thing, doesn't it? Well, yeah, it's the lack of information about the tracks inspired more of a, a creative process after, the, after putting the, the boxes yeah. together. These elements, they're like puzzles for the listener to piece together themselves, yeah. interpret in some way that's relevant to the project that we've been inspired by and 
see if it relates in some way. But it just it just sort of made sense to do that, create a little puzzle out of it for other people to piece together. Yeah, and people have been, like you say, online. Uh, yeah, they've been yeah, sharing their opinions. Like, yeah, and the first edition had the had the kind of souvenir uh, Dorset playing cards, which people have been posting what card they had, and and hopefully. Uh, with this uh, second edition, people get, will be able to meet up and finally piece together the, the jigsaw. Yeah, because there's pieces of a jigsaw mm. in in this. Uh, it, it, we're going to play something else from uh, the second EP. Are these the two? Are these two the ones that are out now? You can get these now. They've unfortunately sold out because they're, they? they're very limited. Right. But we do have more held back for a, a December release for people to f- finish their collection if they were missing one or two okay. of them, and we might even release them as an entire set if, if you want to buy the yeah. whole thing we're gonna, yeah. we're gonna, we are going to have extra copies this track we're going to hear now is a field recording by harriet pullman called uh lindo pete is it yeah it, it's a we think it, it directly references uh the prehistoric man that was found or the, the tolland man that was found in a in a peat marsh yeah. uh, on, on lindo moss uh near wilmslow okay and it it's a kind of alluding to a a, a field recording that was possibly affected in some way by mm. maybe a, a kind of spirit-like voice that you, when you hear the track you'll hear a very okay. strange manipulated voice it was it's rumored to be uh, associated with that that field recording but let you make your mind up <laughs> Field recording that you can find on EP2 of the uh, Lost Tapes Record Club, a project with uh, Carl and Brian from Clinic and David Chattenbach from Finders Keepers. Beautiful artifacts they are. Apparently, Lindo Pete is known jokingly as Pete Marsh as well. That oh, yeah. Guy. I heard that. <laughs> um, fantastic. On a different tack, last week's Freak Zone, we had a lot of stuff from the Liverpool International Festival of Psychedelia. And Carl, you've chosen a track from a band who played at that, Mugstar. Yes. You've ta- you toured with Mugstar, haven't you? Yeah, we toured with them earlier this year. Great band, um, combination of Portwind and early Pink Floyd. It's yeah. a really powerful live as well, very good bass sound. Yeah, and did you enjoy the Psych Festival? Very much so, very much so. Yeah. Uh, got to uh, talk to. Um, Sonic Boom. Um, okay, yeah. About possibly doing some gigs in the future, which would be quite exciting. Yeah, it would be. Um, and he had a, a kind of immersive audio visual experience to a, a room, like a hallucinogenic room that you could yeah. go into, and uh, he was playing these kind of sound collages with like lots of kind of uh, stuff to give you a migraine. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks to Carl and David. Thanks to you for downloading this podcast from the BBC. The Freaky Zone meets at midnight on Saturdays, the Freak Zone at 8 o'clock on Sundays. <laughs>